Okay, so hello and welcome to another video, my friends. I hope you're all doing very well. Um, for those of you joining me for the first time, uh, my name is George and I'm a professional wildlife photographer and cameraman. And that's pretty much what I do on, the, on this uh, channel, uh, is take you with me on my trips uh, out into the field, um, filming and photographing wildlife. Um, currently, I'm based in uh, northern Greece and it is super hot today, it's 36 degrees, so please forgive me if I start sweating. Um, today what I wanted to do was make a video for you, uh, giving you some uh, tips, hints, advice, uh, mechanical and creative, um, in terms of uh, filming uh, wildlife. The first, um, we'll start off with the um, technical, mechanical points. The first point that I wanted to make, uh, which uh, I've spoken about before in a previous video, uh, where I was talking about my favorite bits of uh, gear for wildlife filmmaking. Um, I'll put a link up here somewhere for you if you haven't seen that one already. Uh, it might be of interest to you. Um, the first point is um, having a decent tripod. Um, I won't labor the point too much here because, as I mentioned, I've already uh, spoken about it in that video, but suffice to say that uh, for wildlife filmmaking uh, you need a solid tripod um, that is going to be sturdy and stable enough to support the uh, weight of kit that you're going to put on it. Um, it's an absolute prerequisite if you want to record um, uh, broadcast quality uh, footage of wildlife is um, to have a decent tripod. Okay, uh, enough said about tripods, I don't want to bore you on those. Um, the second point is actually related to the tripod, uh, and that is the kind of head that you use on your tripod. Um, for filmmaking, uh, again, it's pretty much a prerequisite that you use a fluid head. Um, no other head is able to do what a fluid head can do and provide you with a smooth enough motion uh, that a fluid head can. Uh, and it basically, once you unlock uh, the, uh, the, the head, it allows you to set levels of friction so that you have smooth panning and smooth tilting as well. Um, and, and, and that'll give you much, much smoother shots than you would on a normal uh, bull head. Uh, photographic bullhead. So that's point number two. Um, point number three uh, is also uh, linked to that, um, and that is to actually, uh, if you have a, 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 a fluid head, is to actually balance your kit on it. Um, what do I mean by balancing? Uh, it's basically is finding the center of gravity for your kit. So if I show you here, if I loosen the plate, you can actually slide the, the, the camera forwards and backwards uh, on the head. So you want to try and find the center of gravity uh, so that when you do tilt uh, either down or up, uh, the camera stays there regardless uh, without moving um, and doesn't just drop forward or drop backwards. If you have your, uh, your camera not balanced properly, um, then when you just turn away suddenly, it'll just start drifting and tilt forward on its own or backwards, and you don't want that. You want it to be nicely balanced uh, on the tripod. Um, it can be a challenge when using a zoom lens such as this one, because this does shift the center of gravity. Um, so you need to find a happy medium, basically. Uh, and adjust the friction accordingly on the um, on the head. The fourth uh, technical point, mechanical point, um, that I want to make is to uh, use an EVF. Um, this one is the Port Keys uh, LI, I think it's called, um, and it's a it's a budget option, um, uh, but it does its job just fine. Um, certain benefits with using an EVF. Uh, the first, and for me one of the most important, is that it actually adds an element of stability um, to, um, to filming. So you normally have two points of contact on the camera, 
uh, your hand, one hand on the handle, the other hand on the lens itself, uh, either racking the zoom or focusing. Uh, so that's two points. By having an EVF and resting your head on it, it actually gives you a third point of contact, which again adds to the stability. And it's especially true for when you're tracking uh, an animal through uh, a, a, a scene. The fifth and final uh, point that I want to make for the uh, my list of technical mechanical um, tips uh, is to use a telephoto zoom lens uh, rather than a, t uh, a, a fixed uh, prime lens. A um, couple of reasons for that. Um, the first is shot variety. Um, by being able to rack between 60 and 600 on this one, um, I'm able to shoot without interruption uh, different focal lengths to provide my editors uh, with a variety that they can cut between. Uh, because in wildlife filmmaking, you can't, it's not enough to have just one static shot um, of a scene and just letting that run. Uh, viewers, uh, the audience will lose their interest, uh, engagement from that, um, from watching. So you need, that's why between five and 10, every five, 10 seconds, there's a cut you'll notice when watching documentaries on TV. Um, and being able to uh, um, be shooting wide and then rack in, carry on shooting uh, tight, allows the editor to cut uh, between those two uh, clips um, without any losing any of the action that's happening in front of the camera. The second reason uh, I recommend uh, a zoom lens as opposed to a fixed prime um, is, in, is again in terms of tracking, especially birds in flight. So in photography, um, when you are when you see a bird up in the sky and you bring your camera up to, to, to photograph it, your eye is on the same plane as the lens. Um, so it's quite easy to actually find the animal in frame and then focus and shoot. With filming, um, it's, and especially setting in a setup like this, it's not that simple because there is an offset between where your eye is uh, looking, whether it's looking uh, just out into the scene or looking through the EVF or looking on the back screen. Um, there's an offset between your eyes and, and where the lens is looking. And trying to uh, triangulate that basically and pick up the animal in the sky is quite difficult. Having a zoom lens means you can start off wide um, and then as you pick up the animal in frame uh, and focus, then you can rack your zoom in either slowly or quickly. Uh, and then carry on tracking the animal through the scene. So yeah, the, um, hugely beneficial uh, for that purpose is being able to actually locate the animal in frame uh, for those uh, flight shots. Okay, and that brings us to my uh, creative list uh, of tips for you. Um, and it's basically uh, comes down to uh, providing your editor, uh, whether it's uh, somebody else in a production company or yourself, um, with choice in the edit suite uh, by giving a wide variety of shots that they can cut between to be able to tell the story. Because the difference between uh, stills photography and um, filming is that we are uh, telling stories. Um, with still photography, uh, it, you can capture a beautiful image uh, on its own uh, of a particular animal, and that's enough, you've captured a beautiful shot. Uh, with filming, it's not enough. Uh, you need to be telling a story. Um, oh, that's the idea of it, at least. And like any good story, uh, it will have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, and in order to tell the story, beginning, middle, and end, you need a series of shots. So the first shot that you'll need is a shot that sets the scene, that brings the viewer into the world of the animal that you are telling the story about. Um, so th that can be a, a wide shot, um, it can be a drone shot, 
uh, and it basically introduces the country, the region, the environment, whether it's on a mountain or a lake or the ocean, wherever it might be, it brings the viewer into that world. Um, and it allows you to take the next step in telling your story, which is to introduce your character. Um, and there's different ways you can uh, introduce the character. You could, for example, uh, just uh, from the from the scene setting shot, uh, just show the animal, uh, cut to the uh, a shot of the animal within that uh, environment. Uh, a nicer way of doing it, a more interesting way of doing it, is to reveal the animal somehow. Uh, it can be a simple reveal uh, by panning across the scene and finding the animal in the environment. Uh, it could be a mystery reveal, uh, which is an interesting way of doing it as well, whereby you might have, um, for example, uh, some leaves, uh, bushes rustling, moving around, and you catch a glimpse of fur or something in the bushes, and then eventually the animal comes through uh, and is revealed to be uh, a little fox or something. Um, you could have a, uh, an otter. Uh, so if you have bubbles moving across the water, so you're panning across, filming the bubbles, and then the animal surfaces and reveals itself to be an otter. Um, so interesting ways of, of revealing your, your main character. So third on the list of uh, shot variety uh, would be the action sequence, um, the behavior basically that you're telling the story about that that animal exhibits. Uh, and in order to film that, uh, again, going back to what I was saying uh, when I was talking about the zoom lens, is being able to shoot wide, mid and tight uh, is hugely important in telling that story. Um, like I said, you need to be able to the, let the editor cut uh, the action uh, from, from wide to tight uh, to keep the viewer engaged and you don't want to miss any shots. So if you have an animal facing one way um, and then you stop filming from the wide shot and you rack in your zoom, you want it to be in the same position and being able to do that quickly uh, it will, will help. Point number four for shot variety uh, would be the tracking uh, shots, traveling shots, uh, of which there's a few ways that you can do that. Um, you could have the animal entering frame. Uh, so if you predict where the animal, if you see it in the, in the environment and you see where it's traveling, you can pan ahead of it, frame it up, focus up, and let the animal enter, cross, and exit the frame. Uh, a static shot. Um, you could have it, um, uh, you could be where you're just following the animal and like I said uh, before where you just graduate, gradually uh, bring the camera to a stop and let the uh, animal exit frame. Um, you could have like for the mystery reveal with the otter example, <clears throat> have the animal appear within the frame uh, so you predict where the animal will surface uh, allow it to surface, do, its, do, do what it's doing, and then you can either carry on following it or you can allow it to exit uh, the frame also. Uh, so fifth on the list of shot variety would be uh, the detail shots, um, whether that's um, going in really tight on plumage, uh, going really tight on an eye, uh, on claws, uh, whatever that might be, but, but just showing that physical trait of the animal. Uh, that you want to, that is part of the story. Um, so it could be, you know, uh, focusing on the beak, on the teeth, whatever it is. It's just super tight detail shots. Um, all helps to create an interesting story, being able to cut to those kind of shots. Uh, number six on the shot variety list uh, would be a portrait shot. Uh, so it's basically a video portrait. Um, of the animal still in the frame, whether it's perched on a branch or sat in the shade. It's uh, basically a static shot of the animal, um, which is just a beautiful portrait, beautiful light, beautiful environment. So that brings us to number seven uh, on our shot variety uh, list, um, which would be a closing shot, because you want to round off the story in a nice way. Uh, so you would need to capture some kind of uh, finale uh, closing 
to that story. So it could be a shot of the animal going off into the distance, whether it's a, a, a jackal trotting off into the darkness, whether it's a bird flying off into the, into the mountains, um, just something that will round off the story and give it a nice end. Lastly, uh, number eight on our uh, shot variety list, uh, and that is B-roll of the environment that the animal lives in um, and that can be anything from tight shots to wide shots of uh, trees bushes flowers bees um, uh, anything within the environment that the animal lives in and the importance of those shots is they act as bridging shots uh, for when the editor cannot link um, two clips together they might use a bridging shot b-roll of the environment in that way to actually um, cut between those two shots uh, and that way it creates a, a bridge. It's also a useful way of actually um, for the editors to bridge between two sequences. So you might have a sequence, one sequence of a fox and then followed by a sequence of a badger and it's linked by um, a clip of b-roll of the environment. Uh, so super useful way of, uh, of uh, giving your editor uh, choice in the edit suite, uh, shoot lots and lots of um, b-roll of the environment. Uh, like I said, tight shots uh, and uh, wide shots. And that uh, pretty much wraps up the uh, list of shot variety. Uh, the last point uh, I want to make, uh, the last tip I want to give you uh, in terms of filming wildlife and making your edit that much better, uh, that much more uh, rich um, is to not forget about the sound and there's different layers of sound that you might want to record so you, there's the ambient level so that would mean uh, recording the um, the background sounds of cicadas uh, of bees buzzing um, of the wind blowing that sort of thing of the, a rushing stream in the shot that's all background sound and then you layer on top of that sound of the particular thing that you're recording, the, um, the animal that you're filming. So for example, if you had uh, a, a, an otter chewing on a fish, you might want to add so that sound, you might want to have that sound uh, to layer in uh, of the otter as it's crunching on, those, uh, on the bones of the fish. Um, and it makes the edit that much uh, richer, like I said. Um, if you can't record it in the field yourself, if you don't have the recording equipment to be able to do that, um, the alternative is to find it online in one of the very many um, music and sound libraries that exist. Uh, I think there's Artlist is one, Epidemic Sound is another, and there's uh, 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 so many more uh, that you can uh, have a look for. Um, I'm not sp sponsored by any of those, by the way. So that rounds off my list of uh, tips, hints, and bits of advice for filming wildlife. Um, I hope you found it useful uh, and you're able to uh, put it to some use in uh, one of your own future projects. So it just remains for me to uh, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now.